Hello and welcome to the podcast today. I'm thrilled that you joined me and I'm so excited because I have my good friend Terry Savelle Foy here. Terry, thanks so much for coming. Thank you. It's an honor. Oh. I just love you to pieces. Well, I love you back <laughs> and I, I'll just tell you a little bit about Terry. You know, uh, we grew up as preacher's kids and our families knew each other and uh, I'll never forget, Terry, I saw you uh, on television about 10 years ago or so, yeah. and you were just so powerful. Oh and I began to watch you, and I began to listen to your podcast, oh. and, and you've just really poured into my life. And, uh, you know, you're called uh, the cheerleader of dreams. <laughs> and I love that because you really have inspired me in that way. But your life wasn't always the way it is right now. You were yeah. sort of in a rut. Yeah. And so let's start by you telling us your story. Yeah. Well, yeah, I grew up in a strong word of faith home like you. Mm -hmm. um, went through some things in my childhood, you know, violated, went through an abusive relationship, went through some painful things. And I just hid it all behind a big smile like nobody really knew. But then as I got older, I just got into this rut where nothing was changing. I just, you know, they say you behave in a manner consistent with how you see yourself. Well, I saw myself as not much, so I really didn't pursue much. And so for 11 years after college, I literally just went to work, came home, went to work, came home, lived paycheck to paycheck, I would wake up at the last minute, turn the music on, jam all the way to the office, work all day, jump in the car, and then get intrigued watching other people live their dreams, you know, watching TV for hours. Well, then all of a sudden, one day, I mean, I just hit rock bottom. My marriage is this close to divorce. I had no dreams, no goals for my life. And I just, I didn't have a success coach come to the house. No John Maxwell showed up, nothing like that. I just came up with this ridiculous looking plan. I said, okay, something has to change. I'm going to make myself listen to one faith building message every day for 21 days. That was it. You know, I, I had heard that if you do something consistently for 21 days, yes. you can break a habit and start a new one. So, you know, I always have little props here. So I got a CD player, stole a bunch of CDs from my parents. I got a little post-it said push play. That's, awesome. <laughs> That's how undisciplined I was, okay? So I put this on my bathroom mirror. The first morning I went in there and I saw, oh yeah, push play. I pushed play and I started hearing the Word of God, like podcasts like this, just listening to it. Well, the next day I did it again, the next day I did it again. And you know, I had to ask myself, when can I do this to be the most consistent? I thought, well, I could do it in the morning while I'm getting ready. It takes a long time to look like this. <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah. So I said, I might as well push play. Well, at the end of 21 days, I thought, I don't want to stop. I'm going to do a whole month. Yeah. Well, then at the end of the month, I thought, I'm going to do two months. Then it went to three months. Well, that was in 2002, and I haven't stopped. So awesome. This morning, I was listening to messages yes. in Houston, Texas. <laughs> but here's the thing. I was listening one morning to John Maxwell, yes. and I heard him make this statement. He said, if I could come to your house and watch you for 24 hours, I could tell in what direction your life is going to go. He said, I could tell if you're going to be a success or a failure. Wow. I thought, well, how? He said, the reason I say this, he said, let me just watch you from the moment you wake up until you go to bed that night. He said, just by observing you in one full day, I could tell in what direction you're going. He said, the reason I say that is because the secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine. That's good. The secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine. So good. I changed my routine, Lisa, and it changed my whole life. That's amazing. And you know, I think about what you said, Terry. I mean, you're getting ready in the morning anyway. Yeah. There are so many little uh, segments of time that are wasted yeah. that we could really be improving ourselves and encouraging ourselves right. by just pushing play or yeah. reading a book or, right. you know, watching a good teaching or motivational mm -hmm. uh, message. And so it's so good to capture those times. Right. In fact, they say the average American drives 20 minutes to work and 20 minutes back home every day. After doing that for five years, that's 1,250 hours in your car wow. or the equivalent of a college education if your, you just push play. Your life could be changed. Yes. Right it could be so different. Right. That's amazing. So that's where I began just learning things. Like, I'm just adding more mascara, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and I would just hear things like successful people have vision. I would think, I don't have a vision. Then I would hear, you know, the Bible says people perish for lack yes. of vision. Mm -hmm. 
that's what was happening. I was perishing. And then I would hear things like successful people write their dreams and goals. I would think, what's the big deal? Why do I have to write it, you know? Yeah. But then I would hear, you know, Jim Carrey, Katy Perry, Arnold Schwarzenegger, they write their dreams. And this came from God's Word. He's the one who said, write the vision, That's right. make it plain. Mm -hmm. So I started writing dreams, writing goals for my life, and they started happening. Yeah. So, you know, I like what the late Kenneth Hagin used to say. He said he'd see people praying at the altar, you know, and he'd gently tap them on the shoulder and he'd say, sweetheart, what are you praying about? What are you praying for? And so many times people would say, nothing in particular. He'd say, then that's exactly what you're going to get. Nothing <laughs> in particular. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I started getting clear on my mm -hmm. dreams and goals, like yeah. being very specific. Mm -hmm. You know, like it started with like pay off the MasterCard. $3,756.12. Like getting crystal clear on those yes, goals. Yes, yes. And then I started achieving them, mm -hmm. which led to pay off the car. Mm -hmm. You know, I started with read a book, which led to then write a book. Yeah. You know, or so good. visit France, which yeah. led to impact the nation yeah. of France. That's so good because when you have it in front of you, is you think, is there magic in writing it down? The magic is that you read it and you look at it every day. Right. Because what, what do you say? What you look at, your yeah, life will Yeah, you become will what you behold. Yes. So is, whatever you keep before your eyes, it will mm -hmm. eventually show up in your life. Yeah. And you say one thing, don't start with the big goals. Right. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, because, you know, I do. I, you come into Cheerleader of Dreams. I love to teach people to dream. You know, like... Dream of the house on the Pacific Ocean. Dream of the Grammy Award. You know, do that. Yes. But also, let's bring it down a notch, too, and let's pay off the student loan. Yes. <laughs> right? Let's get the real estate license. Let's finish another semester of college. Or, you know, let's, yeah, let's start building your faith. Because mm -hmm. when you achieve those smaller goals, they're not that small, but when you achieve those, then it gives you the faith and momentum to go yeah. after the bigger one. That's right. You know, so. Yeah. You're not, you, you, can, you can have wish. You can wish, yeah. wish I, that things would change. I wish things would change. But, you know, you have to really be intentional right. about it because it's not going to happen until you start <clears throat> pursuing those things. That's right. So good. So as you did this, how did it affect your life and your marriage and, you know, what well, happened Well, you there? know, it's funny because when I graduated from college, I went to Texas Tech, and I'll never forget at my college graduation party, like I got the cap and gown on, we're celebrating, you know. I turned to my family, and I think I said the dumbest thing I've ever said. <laughs> I said, I will never study again. <laughs> I thought I've paid my dues. I will never pick up another book. Well, the sad thing is, I backed up my dumb promise <laughs> for 11 years of my life. So for 11 years after college, never read, never went to conferences like outside of church, you know, never listened to podcasts, anything like that. Well, then when I just started making myself read, you know, just one little book at a time, I set the alarm for 20 minutes and just make myself read started going to conferences, started investing in myself. Like, I remember the first time I went to a minister's website, bought $60 worth of product, and I thought, I cannot believe I'm spending 60 bucks on faith-building resources, you know? <laughs> yes. Then I thought, I would easily spend that on clothing. Yeah. This is my future. Well, the next 11 years, talk about how it affected me. I went from ghostwriting books for other people to authoring books. I went from attending conferences to speaking at conferences. I went from watching TV for hours to hosting a TV show. Literally, because I grew, everything around me grew. Yes. My marriage improved, my finances improved, my relationships improved. Everything grew as I grew. Yes. So, you know, there's um, Jim Rohn. I don't know if you've heard of him. He was yes. a great motivator. He said, in fact, I've got a little prop here. He said, you know, I love he your was, props. You like the props? I didn't bring very many, but we'll play with these. He said, you know, he was full of excuses. Mm -hmm. And he said this wealthy man told him one day, he said, Jim, what you have at this moment in your life, you have attracted by the person you've become. Well, he said, he didn't have much. And he said, I just complained to everybody. He said, I, I complained about the government, the economy, taxes. I blamed everybody. Well, he said, one day his mentor said to him, he said, Jim, what you have, it's your fault. You've attracted by what you've become. He said, if you don't have much, perhaps you haven't become much. Yeah. Well, Jim was so offended because that's a painful thing to hear. So he said he held up his paycheck to this wealthy man, and he said, you don't understand. He said, this is all they pay. His mentor said, no, this is all they pay you. Wow. <laughs> he said, they pay others more. This is what they pay you. 
But then he told him this. He said, don't wish it was better. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. He said, don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. But then he told him this. He said, learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. He said, if you work hard on your job, you'll make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you can make a fortune. So powerful. We know you think about, Lisa, the Bible says, to whom much is given, Mm -hmm. much is required. Yes. Right? Yes. So as we start investing in ourselves, Mm -hmm. as we grow, everything grows. Mm -hmm. As we close today, so let's think about how we can invest in ourselves. Yeah. We can start reading, push and play like yes. you did. Yes. And we can start writing our goals down, write yes. the vision down. Make it plain. Can you add anything to that? Well, and the thing is, vision always comes first, provision comes second. Yes. So don't be discouraged. Every dream you have, it's going to be impossible mm-hmm. and it's going to require faith. The Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith. Well, how do you get more faith? Faith comes by hearing. Yes. So every time you push play, you listen to a faith building podcast, faith comes. And when faith comes, fear goes. That is so good. So. Oh, it's so exciting to talk this, about it. Right? We can do it. We yes. can do it. And so I so appreciate you coming. It's an honor. And being a part of this. Listen, I encourage you to push play. Start investing in yourself. Listen to Terry's uh, podcast. Read her books. Tell us about your books. Imagine Big. Yes, Imagine Big. Dream at Pennant Living, which teaches people. Love how to make vision boards work. Yes. Um, we have a new one coming out called The Five Things Successful People Do Before 8 O'Clock in the Morning. That's so good. It doesn't have to be 8 o'clock. It can be any yes. time. But it's just the fact that we have a routine. It's a little later for me. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> Terry's over the gym at 5.30 in the morning, and I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll text me late at night, and I'm out. Yes, so. that's right. That's right. I do my exercising late in the day. But, yeah. you know, it's just a matter of getting into a good routine, not just going, you know, living day to day with not knowing where you're going, not having any direction. Right. And I think that's what it's all about. Yes. And it yeah. really, it's not just the dreams of the Grammy and all that. It's yeah. about fulfilling what God puts you on this earth to do. Yes. And yeah. this is how you get started going towards that's it. That's right. We have a purpose. There's greatness inside of each one of us. And, that's right. And we need to get connected with God and, and find out what that purpose is. And the only way you're going to do it is to start investing in yourself. Yes, that's, that's so true. true. Well, I'm so glad you joined us today. God bless you. We'll see you next time.